Now, as we leap into new worlds, we welcome on stage Cam Gafarian, founder and CEO at IBX, co-founder and executive chairman of X Energy, Intuitive Machines, Axiom Space, and Quantum Space, to talk about our journey to the stars. Hello everyone. Salam Alaikum. I am so delighted to be here. I want to first express my thanks and appreciation to His Excellency Al Sawaha and Al Tamimi. Thank you. Uh, I am delighted to be here and I hope you all ready to go to a cosmic journey with me today to the stars. Is everybody ready to go to a cosmic journey? Okay, I see some hands up. Well, when I was uh, 11 years old, I saw Neil Armstrong landing on the surface of the moon. That inspired me so much that I decided I'm going to have my career in a space program. So I've been associated with NASA programs for over uh, 40 years, involved in many missions that looked at the cosmos, like... James Webb Space Telescope and Hubble Space Telescope and some that uh, look down on Earth like uh, Earth science missions and technology missions. And uh, one of the ones that uh, was a dream come true for me was being involved with human space flight. Uh, so uh, we won two contracts at Johnson Space Center supporting International Space Station 24 by 7. So when the astronaut talked from space and they said, Houston, they would be talking to my company employees and that was a dream come true for me. But one of the things that I want to start my conversation with is, have you ever considered how vast is the universe and what is it like to go to the stars? What I like to do is take this room and uh, let's all assume that this is a spaceship. And we're gonna, I'm going to take you to a journey where we're going to go 250 miles above Earth at low Earth orbit, where the International Space Station is. We're going to go a little bit further uh, to the moon and to Mars. And then uh, also see what is it like to travel to the stars, okay? So the first thing uh, I want to do is just explain a little bit what, is, what I'm talking about. You see, if you leave our solar system, you get past the moon and Mars, and we leave our solar system, we're on our galaxy called Milky Way. The distance from one point of our galaxy to another is 100,000 light years. So if we go with the speed of light, it would take 100,000 years to go one way from one part of our galaxy to the other. Can you fathom that? Now, we know for a fact that there are somewhere between 100 to 400 billion stars in our galaxy alone. So imagine our sun and the planets around it. Now there are 100 to 400 billion of those stars like our sun with planets around it. And now we know that there are many of them have similar characteristics to our own planet Earth. They're called exoplanets. Um, and so let's assume that we leave our galaxy. For a long time, we thought there are billion other galaxies. And now we know that there are trillion other galaxies with billions of stars in each, and each one will have planets around them. I just want to bring that down to a level where we can fathom the size of the universe a little bit. When my son was eight years old, we were at the beach and he asked me, Dad, how big is the universe? And I used the example from Carl Sagan to show him how big is the universe. I picked up a grain of sand and put it on the palm of my hand. And I said, son, do you see this grain of sand? And I said, imagine all the grains of sands in all the oceans, in all the beaches on earth, 
right? It's really hard to fathom how many grains of sands there are on our planet, okay? So I said, our solar system is just one grain of sand in the oceans of sands. Our planet is just inside that grain of sands. That's how small we are. So now I'd like to show you a video uh, of an uh, organization that I founded. It's a nonprofit institute called Limitless Space Institute. And this video is going to explain what it takes not to go 100,000 light years, but just go four and a quarter light years to our closest star called Proxima Centauri. If you can please show that video, go incredibly fast. Not that one, the other one. The International Space Station is really an amazing engineering achievement. The other one. We've slowly progressed from capsules and vehicles that visited for a short time to places like Skylab, where we ultimately did a 90-day mission back in the 70s. Now we're on ISS for a year or more. And now it's time for the next space station. Axiom Space is about making living and working in space commonplace. The government has forecasted a demand for flying NASA crew members to low Earth orbit to conduct basic research in furtherance of their goals of deep space exploration. Then we want to expand what can be done in space. 15 years from now, 20 years from now, we're going to be surrounded by objects that we can't live without that we're manufacturing in space. So today we are in the process of building our first two elements. We have subsystems in development. We have a full lab of life support hardware that we're putting through its paces. We are building a propulsion system. It's a lot of those details in developing a space station. First two modules are being built by our partner, Talasalania. Pab 1 is that first module. It has four crew quarters, it has payload accommodations, and it has all of the systems required to keep crew healthy and alive. So the plan is we'll fly four separate modules to the ISS. When we arrive with the fourth module, it'll have what we need to be independent of the ISS. A lot of thought went into how do we allow it to grow. When we look at the future, we have thoughts on how we could double the number of crew every five years. Axiom's primary objective is to promote making space accessible, whether that's to industries and countries that haven't had access before, and individual. Commercializing low Earth orbit is going to make space much more accessible for everyone. Axiom, through what we're doing with the Axiom station and the rest of the infrastructure that we hope to build, are really looking at taking uh, commercial space to a global audience and a global customer base. We're really building a platform that is not only sustainable but scalable as we bring more and more of the partners of the world into the space arena. And it's really about bringing the number of partners into space to a greater number so that we have more uh, countries and more players in this exploration effort, but it's also about diversifying the economies and things that we can do in space as well, and that requires players from all countries. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Stop. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Godspeed, Axiom 1. The key mission objectives for AX1 have always been scientific research and outreach, performing meaningful science while still taking the time to communicate out the impact and application of that research. This is really uh, the opening of a new era where it's not just government astronauts like it's been for the last 60 years. When you start to dig into it, microgravity is a very unique environment to conduct research and uh, experiments. Just the whole experience looking out of the cupola is beautiful, amazing. Emotional. It's been an amazing experience. This will be something that we can share with humanity. After 17 total days in space, 15 of them aboard the ISS, we are in the final phase of a journey that has covered more than 240 orbits and 6.3 million miles. 
There's our first view of Dragon Endeavor re-entering the Earth's atmosphere with the Axiom-1 crew. We can confirm that the Dragon capsule has splashed down. To the crew of AX-1, well done. So it's really an important precursor that we're building up to. When we have our first module up there, we will be able to be ready to get rolling immediately. That moment where we're captured and birthed to the International Space Station will be a moment that defines how we move forward uh, as a species in low Earth orbit. This will be really the first time a fully commercial element has uh, been part of the complex. We pull that off, we change the world. So that is not the video I intended to show, but now that we've shown Axiom Space, I hopefully will show that video a little later. Uh, so, you know, uh, the journey of 1,000 miles starts with the first step. If you want to go to stars eventually, which I believe the ultimate destination for humanity is to go to stars, we need to start with the first step. We need to start by building uh, space stations in low Earth orbit. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Axiom Space. You saw the video. It's a company that uh, I co-founded with my partner, Michael Safardini, who is sitting here. Uh, Michael is a, uh, truly a legend. He has 28, experience, 28 years of experience with NASA. 10 years of that as the program manager for International Space Station. As you know, by the end of this decade, the International Space Station will retire. Uh, its life will end. And we will have something called a control the orbit. And United States government is not building another space station that falls with private industry. So in 2016, me and Mike decided that we are going to build the first private commercial space station to replace the International Space Station. I can tell you we have come light years since that time, and our space station is being built as we speak and will be launched in the middle of 2025. We're so excited about that. But prior to that, we've done quite of other things. The mission that you saw, AX-1, happened in April of 2022, where we took four private astronauts to International Space Station for 17 days. That made world news, first time ever. We were super excited about this mission. We're going to have another mission May of 2023, and one later in 2023, around November time frame. We're so honored and delighted that we're working with Kingdom of Saudi Arabia government to take future Saudi astronaut uh, to International Space Station in the near future. We're so delighted that we're doing that and we think that this is gonna be a major step forward in the region uh, taking uh, uh, Kingdom uh, astronaut to International Space Station and hopefully make an incredible splash and inspire the next generation uh, of students, eight-year-old, 10-year-old, that uh, will be inspired like I was at age of 11 to be part of the space program because that's our future. Going to space and building space habitats is our future. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about my family office called IBX. IBX stands for Imagine, Believe, Execute. Imagine a certain future, believe it, and then go do it. And as a result of this, the vision for uh, IBX is twofold. One is to protect our home, our planet, because that's the only planet we know so far. And second is to find new homes in stars. And we're doing that by series of company. One is Axiom Space. The second one is called Intuitive Machines, where we're building the first ever moon landers. Actually, we're building three of them that will land on the surface of the moon. The first launch will be in June of 2023 and will be the first commercial space company landing on the south pole of the moon, which is super exciting. Uh, and then we will have future moon landers uh, also building commercial satellites, uh, communication satellite in Cis Lunar. 
creating a new economy in orbit. In addition to that, there is a company called Quantum Space where we are uh, creating uh, space situational awareness for these satellites from uh, Earth orbit all the way to cislunar, uh, where we're building the super highways for cislunar economy and beyond. Uh, and also working on a company called X Energy, where we are a world leader in advanced nuclear. Uh, these are nuclear reactors that can never ever melt down, uh, totally safe, modular, can be carried in the back of trucks or train anywhere in the world and doesn't require water for cooling. These are reactors that truly 100% are safe, regardless of whether there's an earthquake or there is a tsunami or a plane crashes into it, which is really holy grail in nuclear. We're also involved in nuclear thermal propulsion and nuclear electric propulsion, uh, where we can shorten the time that is needed to go. Uh, the International Space Station is really amazing. Uh, to the surface of the moon and beyond or going to Mars we can cut that time by two-thirds. These missions impact our civilization as a whole in general, so it's pretty amazing. Now going back to Axiom Space a little bit, like I said, this is a company we started in 2016. We have $2 billion worth of contract we signed. In fact, next time you see an astronaut on the surface of the moon or low Earth orbit, they would be wearing Axiom Space spacesuits. We won this contract, three and a half billion dollars, where we're building the spacesuit for NASA. And this is pretty incredible, in addition to building our space station. In 2000, since uh, by the end of 2022, we had 400 million dollars worth of revenue. In 2023, by itself, we will have uh, 500 million dollars worth of revenue. And by 2028, we will have a billion dollars worth of cash flow. Uh, and, and, and in addition to taking private astronauts to space, there is two other ways where we're making our, our money. One is we were going to have basically provide, uh, you know, we're, NASA has decided they no longer want to be the landlord, they want to be tenants. So we're going to be the landlord and we're going to lease space to NASA and other uh, government agencies. So far, we have signed six government agencies that are with us. In fact, later this month, we're taking a UAE astronaut to space February 25th uh, for six months, which is super exciting as well. And then later on, hopefully, we'll be taking uh, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia astronaut to space, which we're also delighted about. So think of it this way, the way we make money. Think about it if we decide together to build a shopping center, and let's say this shopping center cost $3 billion to build. By the way, it cost overall $100 billion to build the International Space Station. We're going to build our space station for about $3 billion. Now, think about if we can build this shopping center for about $3 billion a year, and after it's completed, have $3 billion a year worth of revenue at 20 to 30% margin. This is what we're doing. We're going to be leasing space and enable different technologies to prosper in low Earth orbit. We're creating a new ecosystem. You can see on this picture things like um, bioprinting, actually printing uh, corneas or retinas in space because of microgravity environment, or uh, astronauts going to space, satellite refueling, it costs so much to launch a satellite to orbit. If there is a way that we can refuel the satellite in orbit, we can uh, enormously reduce the cost and extend their life, or even repair satellites. Uh, things like cloud in space, cybersecurity in space, uh, manufacturing space. These are all the new technologies that we're enabling to happen in low Earth orbit and creating this new ecosystem this is our X factor. I often tell people that being involved in Axiom Space today is sort of like being involved at early days of internet. It's super exciting. Just give you a little bit a deeper perspective. You all know SpaceX and Blue Origin and Boeing. Those are the companies that are building rides to space. They're taxis, they're U-Hauls that building rides to space. 
We are the world leader in destination business. In the other word, where would those rockets go if they have no place to go? We're building that ecosystem in space and we're super excited to do that. And the company is expanding and growing by uh, leaps and bounds. We're at the moment uh, in the process of signing many other governments and taking many astronauts to inter International Space Station. Uh, I don't know if you have the other video ready. I like to go back and show you that uh, a video about uh, what is it like to go to close stars. Is that ready? Can we do that? As incredible as it may seem, there will be a time, and it may be closer than you think, when we live on other worlds. The moon, Mars, and in the space between. And when that day comes, just as always, our children will look with curiosity across these new horizons with a desire to go further and to explore what lies beyond. But beyond Mars, the distances between worlds grow immensely, even within our own solar system, and become truly vast in between stars. If we ever want to reach out across these distances, we need to learn how to go fast. Using our current knowledge of physics and engineering, we could build nuclear locomotives to take humans to all the worlds in our solar system. But a starship powered with a nuclear heart aimed for even our closest star, Proxima Centauri, would have to harbor hundreds of generations of people, all living their entire lives aboard before reaching its destination four and a quarter light years away. It would take two years just to reach the orbit of Saturn and another 2,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri. We need to be able to go faster. With our current knowledge of physics, but with engineering we have yet to develop, we can imagine a propulsion system with the sun for a heart, a fusion engine that could accelerate a starship up to 5% of the speed of light. This ship could cross the orbit of Saturn in six months and reach Proxima Centauri in just over a century. But if we want to traverse interstellar distances, in less than a human lifetime, we have to go incredibly fast. The universe has shown us that this can be done by altering the scale of space itself. And we are working to develop new understandings of physics to learn how this might be controlled. If we could construct a starship with a propulsion system that decreases space in front of it and expands space behind it, this ship could cross enormous distances effectively faster than the speed of light. Such a ship would reach from Mars to Saturn in just a matter of minutes and be able to reach Proxima Centauri in less than six months. From there, there are no limits to where we could go. Perhaps one day, humanity will look up at an alien night sky and strain to find the pale yellow dot that is our sun, our home, and know for the first time 
as we look back on ourselves, that we are not alone in the universe. This journey starts today. I hope this was inspiring. We actually showed this video. Thank you. Thank you. We actually showed this video to eight-year-old. Uh, our mission is to inspire and educate the next generation to think beyond our solar system, to think universally, to come up with new physics, new math, new engineering, to figure out how we can go to stars in the future. I hope you join this journey of space exploration and start with the low Earth orbit with Axiom Space and eventually developing technologies we can go to stars. Thank you so much for listening and shukran. <laughs>